for it, Ecoversity. And uh, I'm gonna give you a little demonstration on beekeeping. And this is top bar beekeeping. All right, so you have simple box with top bars laid on top. Very simple, very cheap, affordable, and the maintenance is quite easy. So all you have to do, get the bees in here, and go to work. Of course, there's a little bit of maintenance and a little bit of knowledge that is required, but when it comes down to it, this lets the bees do what they do best. So once we have the bees in here, we use a smoker to calm them. When you get near bees and their hive, they have a pheromone that puts off an alarm signal to the other bees. So by smoking them, it clouds that, so they're a little bit more they don't get so, you know, stingy. So, of course, you have a veil and whatnot to protect your face and some gloves and light colored clothing, long pants, long shirt, and you're ready to go. Surprisingly, in the city, bees do great. There's gardens, lot, you know, barely any, of course, people do pesticides on little dandelions and stuff, but it's not acres and acres. So the more people you get one or two hives in their backyard, the better and it is much easier than people think. Bees are the number one pollinator. There is many others, but bees, these girls do the work. They pollinate almost everything we eat from fruits to vegetables. If you like those, you should like bees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the basic layout of the combs, some of the bees, a difference between a worker, a drone, and if we're lucky, We'll find the queen. Is it a cow shit or what is it? Yeah, cow shit. So the first thing you do when you enter a top bar hive, got your smoker lit, your veil on, give a couple puffs of smoke in the door. Get your hive tool or knife, pop out the back top bar, give a couple puffs of smoke in the back. And as you see here, they're starting to attach the comb on the top bar. So as you see, there's not much props needed. The girls know what to do. They've been doing it for millions of years. So as you see, we're starting to get into some bees here. If you can see, Right here, where the bees are hanging in the trapeze kind of look, that means the girls are starting to make comb. So what they do is after they have ingested honey, they digest that honey and secrete it wax out of their wax gland. And then they band together, pass the wax down, and build these beautiful combs. And as you can see, most of these bees in this vicinity are female. 95% of a hive are females. And they have this small, fairly slender shape. This one right here is a male called a drone. If you could see, it's a little bit fatter, a little shorter. They got kind of big bug eyes. And they don't really do too much besides mate. One problem or concern about top bar hives is when they make this nice comb, it is quite fragile, especially when it's hot, there's not much to attach it to. So you have to be very careful if you're looking at them, you have to turn them in such a way that you don't tip it over so that it doesn't have any support. 
If you zoom in in this circle right here, the queen is right in the middle. She's kind of got a dark abdomen. Her abdomen's almost twice the size as workers. And that's her right there. When she walks, the, the other girls usually get out of her way. As you can see, it almost leaves a wake like a boat. So this one on my finger is a worker. You could tell the difference in the size. Her abdomen's almost twice as long. So you only have one queen? There's only one queen per hive. She, once she has mated, she can stay fertile for three years and she can live for about two to three years. The rest of the bees, the worker, has a lifespan about 30 days. They usually die because of burnout. Drones have about a lifespan about 24, 25 days until they mate. As soon as they mate, they die. As you see right here, this is worker brood. So these are babies that have been capped and they're in the cocoon stage. So there is an egg stage, larva stage, and then an adult stage. These girls in here are, are in adult stage. I know that these are females because of the certain leathery top that they have. And as you can see, we try and, and breed gentle bees. How do you do that? So how you do that is it's all in the queen. So you make sure that the queen is a good queen. She's laying nice tight brood patterns and she's gentle. So if if you go through the bees and they're constantly buzzing in your face, that means that they have some gene that makes them a little bit edgy. So what you do is unfortunately you have to replace the queen with a nice queen. It takes a couple weeks for her babies to kind of rule the hive and then you have yourself nice bees. They can get very scientific with this to have really nice bees incredible honey producers and things like that. They can get incredibly specific. We like to just generalize in the sense of getting nice bees is a good start. So right here is a drone cell. As you can see the difference, it's got a little bulge. Yeah. Kind of looks like a bullet compared to these flat ones here. Oh, so that is the male? This is the male, the bulge, and then the flat ones are the female. As you see, there's much more female because the females do all the work. You can order swarms through many different companies. Then, you know, once you get your bees, it's a little process of getting them in the hive. But once you have the hive, then we go, you know, a couple classes a month and we will go step by step on how to approach the hive, how to work with certain problems. If you have a bad queen, how to remedy that, how to harvest, how to harvest wax and then how to close up for the winter. I think the youngest ones in the class are 13. I think there's a 14, 13, and then a 16. Really, it's open to who's really interested. Cause uh, Lord knows, you know, the young ones will be kind of the future.